Hello and welcome to Clackamas News Online, your online source to current events and activities here on campus. I'm Alberto Hernandez. And I'm Katie Archer. Have you ever hated your name? The play Brighton Beach Memoirs takes us back to Brooklyn during the Great Depression, where Eugene Morris Jerome, who also hates his name, is an aspiring baseball player. We will take you behind the scenes on this comical CCC production. Clackamas Community College's spring production, Brighton Beach Memoirs by Neil Simon, centers around the story of a young boy's journey through adolescence. The play is by this author, Neil Simon, who's a pretty famous American playwright. He wrote, he's written a lot of uh, plays that have been very successful on Broadway, as well as uh, screenplays for some of the plays he wrote and other original screenplays. Now this play, Brighton Beach Memoirs, is the first in a series of a trilogy that deals with his alter ego, a young kid named Eugene Jerome. And Eugene is about almost 15 years old, and uh, the story is uh, about him remembering what it was like growing up. And the era is the Depression era, so it's, it's 1937 that this happens, specifically, uh, just before the World Series, and uh, Eugene is a big baseball fan. So it's a comedy, and, but there is also a lot of um, really true human experience in it. Uh, I think people recognize some of the conflicts that happen within the family, and of course, being that uh, we're recovering from an economic hardship in this country now, I think that there, it's, a, it's a good timing for people to kind of see the reflection of the Depression with what's been going on in the past few years in the United States as far as economic hardship. I play Eugene, a 15-year-old uh, boy growing up in Brighton Beach, Brooklyn. Uh, I've done a lot of dialect work. We've worked really hard on our Brooklyn accents. Um, I did a lot of, of background research into Neil Simon because it's semi-autobiographical. So if I, I watch a lot of interviews with him, uh, talking about his childhood and tried to get inside his head. Reproducing a period in American history requires time and preparation. Cast and crew spend weeks designing the set and getting into the character to create a 1930s atmosphere. I'm playing Lori Morton. She is a 13-year-old girl with a severe attitude. She also has a hard flutter, but um, I don't know. I've been hanging around my younger sister. She's 13, so I've kind of just been spying on her and taking notes. and. Uh, then, you know, having to research the, uh, the accent for Brooklyn, New York. And uh, it's really about it, just spying on my younger siblings and cousins to figure out how 13-year-olds, you know, act. <laughs> I play Stanley, which is the oldest son of uh, the Jerome family. There are two families living in the same household, and I play the eldest son, um, which is interesting because uh, I'm the oldest uh, cast member. <laughs> Audiences should come prepared for a classic coming-of-age comedy, but be ready to re-experience some of the more awkward moments of adolescence. Uh, the show gets a little, uh, little vulgar, but, but it, it's true to life. So be prepared to talk about real people stuff. So we just come prepared for uh, a glimpse of, of real life, um, a real family, um, and a uh, real heartwarming uh, uh, time to share. Recently, tattoos have been a growing part in society. It is a trend among people of any age, which begs the question, are tattoos symbolic or just casual? Our team of investigators dug deeper into the meaning behind the ink on the skin. Some call it body art, others consider them blemishes. Tattoos today are becoming increasingly prevalent, and Clackamas News Online went skin deep to find out more about this growing trend. Um, a couple on my arms, one on my shoulder, one on my stomach, one on my leg. Um, well, I have uh, both sides of my head done. I have, like, my neck on this side, my neck on that side, and then I have, like, my whole upper back done. Um, I just have the odd ones. I've got one on, one on each leg. Um, on my wrists, I've got um, a tattoo on my forearm here, and I've got two that she just did on my arm over here, so. Despite the increasing number of people getting them, tattoos are still a taboo in today's society, and with that comes judgment. 
Friday, I get Friday, feel like I get judged Europe. because I see them as something that people for sure pull got from like military or in like prison that they're not a uh, good person if they have tattoos. Well, older people they they don't like tattoos. I mean, I had a mixed review. Like some of them would be like, "Oh, what are you? Why are you wearing that sleeve on your arm?" And so I'd take it off and show them. And some of them were like, "Oh, cover that back up." And then others like, "Oh, that's so cute." So, I've kind of gotten a mixed review. Um, I have been judged. It hasn't been came out and said, but uh, even this day and age, 2014, people still look at that. When I go to job interviews, I cover them, you know, till, till I get my foot in the door and they see that I'm a good worker. Yeah, um, I mean, it's pretty common, especially in Portland, to have tattoos, but for me, I, uh, it's not just my tattoos. It's like it my like style, my yeah. hair, causes a lot of problems. Um, I mean, my, my neck tattoos, they show so much. You know, I think I applied for a, an old navy at a mall and they told me that I had to wear a beanie. So that, like, I guess they couldn't see that my head was shaved or something. And I had to wear a scarf to cover my the rose on my neck because clearly a rose, a black and gray rose, is really expensive, you know. Take my piercings out, this and that, you know. And so I have had issues with that. Despite the judgment, the majority of people with tattoos continue to be proud of them. I'm kind of a just go and do it kind of person. Like I think about what I want before I go and do it, but if I have the money and I really want something, I just go and do it instead of sit there. I mean, I'm only 19 and I have 10, so I kind of went a little crazy, but I like the work that I get done. I like my artists, so I'm spontaneous, I guess. I'm the complete opposite. I think about my tattoos for a while before I get them. I'll have a picture on my wall and if in like six months or so that picture's down swapped out with another one then I know I don't want it on my body permanently. I don't know. I didn't really think mine through but I was a late bloomer. I didn't, I didn't get my first tattoo until I was almost 21. So I mean once you start getting them they're sort of addictive. So it's it's kind of hard. You kind of have to think because it is permanent, but I don't want any of mine covered. I think that I think when you go in and get a tattoo, it becomes a part of you. Well, um, I personally think that with my personality the way it is now, and I'm only 18, when I am like 60, 80 years old, I am not going to give a crap. And like, you know, the ones I have, I got when I was like 18. They're supposed to be both like you know, literary references. And you know, I had this whole idea when I was 18. I was like, I want to get all this, this literary sleeve with all these references. And now I just look at these and I'm like, I'm not going to do that. I still like, you know, like I, I look back and I go, that was, you know, a cool time. And they're remnants of the time. Um, you know, if I had the choice, maybe I'd get something different now. But this is it's what it is, and I like it. I, I look back on it. It's nostalgic to me. So that's probably what it would be. I, I mean, people always say, you know, what is it going to look like when you're older? And I'll be like, I mean, this is the prime of my life, and this is when it's, you know, it looks nice now, and it's, you know, it's serving its purpose now. But, like, honestly, I've seen some pictures of some old people with some tattoos, and they look pretty awesome. I'm going to be fine with them. I'm already older. I'll probably, I'll probably even get tattoos till the 50s and 60s. I believe in them. And if you look at the history of tattoos, people have gotten them for thousands and thousands of years for many different reasons. Maybe there's a mark to show you or something, but pe people still do that. And I, I think it's a, it's a good art, it's a good, uh, it's kind of a commitment, you know, especially if you start, uh, I've always wanted to tattoo my neck, and people have talked me out of it, oh, you won't be able to get a job. And I'm kind of of the mindset that uh, if, somebody's gonna, if somebody's gonna judge me for that, even if I have a college degree or all this experience, I probably wouldn't want to work for them anyways. But, uh, uh, it's just, it's an ancient art that people keep doing today. Some days, some, sometimes today, I think kids get them to just get them, which, that's their choice. But I think they should always mean something, and like you said, I think they should uh, mean something for the rest of your life. Busy agendas for students make it challenging to do coursework. With finals approaching in a few weeks, our crew asked students what their most effective study strategies are and also got recommendations for other students. Students at CCC have a broad range of study habits, ranging from studying at work to studying in the cafeteria. Some students gave some insight to their study habits. When do I study? I 
predominantly spend most of my time studying in the mornings or in the evenings. Where do you study? Where? Uh, I do also work a part-time job uh, doing security, and so that uh, allows me some opportunity to study uh, on the job, which is really nice. At the either at Thai Learning Center, uh, I spend a lot of time in the math lab or in the in that area. Why do you study in those in that, those locations? Well, I am a father and a husband, so studying at home is difficult in some instances because there's usually other things gathering my attention. Studying before a major test changes the study habits of many students. Studying is a priority before tests for most of the students that were interviewed. So my name is Morgan MacDonald. I'm a student at Clackamas Community College. My name is Steve Howling. I'm a student here at Clackamas Community. Uh, my name is Keith Rigg. I'm a student here at CCC. My name is Patty O'Holler. You're a student here? Yes, I am. When do you study? I study between classes. I have classes Monday through Thursday, so like I get out on Mondays and Wednesdays at 2.20 and I come to the library and study. And then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I get out at 11.50 and I come and study. Um, and I study on Fridays when I don't have school. Most people find time to study after class and in the evenings. Some are fortunate enough to be able to study while they work. Do you have a spot where you study? The library, right here. Um, or in my bedroom at home. Why do you like to study at that place? Uh, I like to study here at the library because there's resources that I can use. And at home, the only quiet place is in my bedroom. Many students take advantage of the resources available at the Dye Learning Center and the Community Center for studying. Where specifically do you study? I usually like studying here in the cafeteria. Um, usually around this time, like 10 in the morning, it's pretty quiet. Uh, we're also in the library. There are science, computer, writing, and math labs, as well as the library and die learning center to help students pass their classes. Do you change your study habits in any, in any way when you study for a major test? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I definitely. Yeah. I don't want to cram, but I definitely study a little bit more. If I'm uh, involved with like a writing assignment or something, I'll spend some time on that. But uh, with math, I'll hit the books hard, so I can uh, focus on the test. There are also tutors to provide assistance to students with problems and questions. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again. This is Clackamas News Online. I'm Katie Archer. And I'm Alberto Hernandez. Have a great day.